So ionic compounds are made from ions that have charges. And positive ions and negative ions will join together until they cancel each other out and add up to zero. So here you can see that I have an ion with a plus two charge and an ion with a negative two charge. And those two ions cancel each other out. The plus two and the minus two add up to zero. So you can see that for every one magnesium, I'll have one sulfide. And that makes my formula MgS. I just need one of each because those two ions cancel each other out. But here I have a calcium ion with a plus two charge and a chloride ion that has a negative one charge. Remember, if you don't see a number, it means it's one. So it takes two of those chloride ions to cancel out the plus two charge of my calcium ion. But there's a really quick way to figure out what the formula should be using what we call the crisscross method. You see that I needed two chloride ions, but only one calcium ion. I can take the charge of one and use it as the subscript of the other. I can crisscross the charges. It's just a math trick to figure out what the subscripts should be. So I can quickly see, even without my diagram here, that the formula would be CaCl2. So if the charges are the same magnitude, then the ratio is one to one. If it's plus two minus two or plus three minus three, then I just need one of each because those are gonna cancel out and add to zero. But if the charges are different magnitudes, if it's plus two minus three or plus three minus one, then the ratio can be determined by crisscrossing the charges like I just showed you. So let's go through some practice problems to make sure that you really understand. So first I have Mg plus two and then Cl minus one. So those are different charges. So I'll just crisscross the charges. So it's Mg and then one, and I won't write that. And then Cl and I'll bring over the two. Make sure that you write them as subscripts when you're writing the formula. Notice that's why we call it crisscross. It doesn't just go over, it also goes down. And I'm not changing the charges on anything I'm just using a little math trick to quickly figure out what the subscripts should be. So MgCl2 would be the formula of my first compound. Next, I have potassium K with a plus one charge and sulfide with a minus two charge. Those are different, so I will crisscross those charges. So that's K2S, so that's the formula. Next, I have iron, is Fe with a plus three charge, and oxygen that has a negative two charge. So I will crisscross those charges because they're different. So I put Fe and I bring over that two, O, three. Once again, notice that I made those subscripts. So I'm just using the charges to figure out the subscripts, but you have to bring them over and down. Okay, next, you can see that I have plus two and minus two. So calcium with a plus two charge and oxygen with a minus two charge. If they have the same charge, I don't crisscross them. It's not Ca2O2, I just need one of each. And so that's CaO. And you can see that here too. I have plus one and minus one with my sodium and my chloride. So I don't need to crisscross those. Honestly, even if you crisscross this, you still get one and one but they cancel each other out. I just need one of each. So sodium chloride is NaCl. And finally, I have aluminum with a plus three and chlorine. That chloride ion has a negative one charge. So it's Al and then just one, and then Cl and I need three. It's also important that you can do this for compounds that contain polyatomic ions. And really nothing is different except that sometimes you're going to need to put parentheses around the polyatomic ions, but only when you need more than one of the polyatomic ion. So if you only need one of the polyatomic ion, you just write it normally. If you need more than one, you're gonna put parentheses around it first. So going through some example problems, I have Ca plus two and then NO3 minus one. So I can see that they are different. So I would need to crisscross. 
and I get Ca1 in O3, and because I need two of them, I'm gonna put parentheses first before I put the two. So calcium nitrate would be Ca in O3 parentheses two. Now next I have Na with a positive one charge and OH with a negative one charge. So I only need one of each of these. And so I'll just write one of each. And because I only need one hydroxide, I won't put parentheses around it. So NaOH. My next one, I have different charges. So I will crisscross. And I have Li3 and then PO4 but I only need one. So once again, if I only need one of the phosphates, one PO4, then I don't need parentheses. So Li3, PO4. Here I have a plus two charge on my iron and a negative two charge on my sulfate. So I have plus two and minus two, those cancel. I need one of each. And if I only need one of my polyatomic ion, then I don't need parentheses. So FeSO4. So next I have aluminum with a plus three charge and cyanide with a negative one charge. So I will need to crisscross those. And I have Al1, I only need one aluminum, but I have Cn3. And so because I need more than one of that polyatomic ion, I have to use parentheses. So it doesn't matter whether or not the polyatomic ion has a subscript in itself. If I need more than one of them, and I need more than one cyanide here, I have to use parentheses. And finally here I have Fe plus three, so this is iron three. Iron can have a plus two or a plus three charge, and CO3 negative two, so they are different. So I will need to crisscross, and I get Fe two CO3, parentheses three, because I need more than one carbonate, then I put parentheses around it. So I hope this video has helped you understand how to use the crisscross method for writing ionic formulas. Keep up the great work, and I'll see you next time.